Hello everyone and welcome to Hit Bullseye. My name is Manish and this is your weekly dose of current affairs, the bull dose for the fourth week of April 2023. Uh, good afternoon, Shikha. <clears throat> so uh, we are going to start this session with a lot of news, of course, that is what we are here for. Kafi kuch important hua hai. Let us take a look one by one. Let's start with the first one. Himachal Pradesh has become the first state in India to develop a DNA database for unidentified bodies. So a DNA database is has been developed by the Himachal Pradesh government. It has become the first state in India to do so. We'll see what is the importance of this. Next, the National Panchayati Raj Day was commemorated on 24th of April. On 24th of April, the National Panchayati Raj Day has been commemorated. Next, ISRO's PSLV C55 has been launched. So, Indian Space Research Organization has launched its uh, uh, polar satellite launch vehicle C55. So, we will see. And it has not launched Indian satellites on it. It has launched uh, some uh, Singaporean satellites on it. So, we will take a look at what it has launched. <clears throat> then we have India's first water metro. So something that we may not have thought about till a few years back, but now we have a water metro. So India has metro in a lot of its cities, but for the first time we have metro in water, which is literally boats which are going to act as a public transportation vehicle for the city of Kochi. So we'll take a look at that. Then Mana has been declared as the first Indian village. What is a first village? So when we declare something as a first village, it means that, uh, you know, it India starts from there. It's a very interesting concept. We will discuss what is a first village and why it has been declared. So next uh, Dangal movie uh, must be in the minds of all of us. Uh, it was a great movie by Amir Khan. So, the role played by Amir Khan in that movie is that of Mahavir Singh Fogat, who has four daughters, all four of them winning international accolades in women boxing, women wrestling, I'm sorry. So, Mahavir Singh Fogat in real life has been appointed as the chairman of Mixed Martial Art Association, MMA. So, we will take a look at that. <clears throat> Right? Then, India has become fourth in military expenditure. So, yet another report by Stockholm Peace Research Institute, SIPRI. In the last, last week's video, we had also discussed another report by CIPRI in which India was judged as uh, the largest importer of arms in the world. This time, India is the fourth in global military expenditure which shows an undue, uh, you can say, uh, effort being made by India to become a military superpower. We are the biggest importer of arms and we are the biggest spenders on military, fourth biggest spenders on military, which is a big rank. So global military expenditure is fourth. We'll take a look at that. Chernobyl disaster, which is considered to be the worst nuclear disaster in human civilization. So. Uh, on this particular date, on 26th of April, we commemorate the anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster. So, International Chernobyl Disaster Remembrance Day has been observed. Next, Sharjah Stadium. Sharjah Stadium in UAE. Sharjah Stadium in UAE has been named after Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, one of the stands in the Sharjah Stadium has been named after Sachin Tendulkar. Next, Dalai Lama, the Tibetan Guru, Dalai Lama has got uh, the Magsese Award that he actually got in 1959. 1959 mein award kiya gaya tha award, but he has got it now. Can you believe that? So, Itne saalon ki wait ke baad kyon diya gaya hai, ye bhi hum dekhenge. 
Then Mr. Ratan Tata has been awarded Australia's highest civilian honor. This we also discussed in the last week when it was decided, but now it has been given away. So that is what we will discuss. And finally, pop star Shakira is Billboard's inaugural Latin Woman of the Year. So Billboard is a very famous, uh, you can say, highlight of all the pop stars in the world. And here Shakira has become the first or inaugural Latin Woman of the Year. Okay, so we will take a look at all these things very quickly. Let us start. First is Himachal has become the first to develop a database of unidentified bodies. So there are a lot of unidentified bodies that are found by the police and the other agencies in a particular, uh, you know, in, in any particular area. But it is very difficult to identify whose that body is. And at the same time, there are a lot of complaints received by the police of persons who are missing. So sometimes the bodies are found in such a situation and such a condition that it is not able to it is not possible to identify them so in such circumstances uh, it is only a dna database that can help it is only a dna database that can help maybe the sample of a hair or maybe any bodily fluid or something like that so aisa karne ke liye for the first time there is a state which has taken this initiative and that state is the state of Himachal Pradesh. So here the directorate of forensic services is going to create this particular database and it is going to uh, help identify the bodies and it is going to be a significant development for families who have been frantically searching for their missing loved ones endlessly providing photographs and other information in the hope of discovering their whereabouts. But sometimes the bodies are no longer in the condition. Maybe they are in a water body. Maybe they are swollen. Maybe they met with an accident. Maybe they are burnt, something like that. But the DNA is going to be a really good scientific tool for them to be able to identify them. So, this is the initiative. And most likely and most uh, hopefully, it should be something that all the states should adopt. Why not? So that is why this thing is being done. <coughs> Next, National Panchayati Raj Day. So National Panchayati Raj Day has been commemorated on 24th of April. It is commemorated on 24th of April every year. And Panchayats are Panchayats are the local self-government institutions. So, at every village level, there is a Gram Panchayat. And when you combine a few villages, it becomes a block. And for every block, there is a block samiti. Then for every district, there is a Zila Parishad. All these three institutions, the village Panchayat, the block samiti and the Zila Parishad, they are known as collectively they are known as the panchayati raj institutions or pris so these panchayati raj institutions got legal recognition or constitutional recognition by 73rd constitutional amendment constitution was amended in 1992 two amendments were done 73rd and 74th so by 73rd amendment the rural local self bodies were created like the panchayats the block samitis and the zilla parishads by the 74th amendment the urban local bodies were created which includes municipalities and municipal corporations so these two amendments are known to be the you know the what you can say the most important step that india has taken towards local self government and to commemorate this we celebrate the to commemorate this, we celebrate the Panchayati Raj Day. So this year, Government of India has celebrated it in collaboration with the Government of Madhya Pradesh. And 
द थीम वॉज आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव समावेशी विकास और इंक्लूसिव डिवेलपमेंट आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव समावेशी विकास नेक्स्ट इसरोज पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी फाइव हैज बिन लॉन्च सो इंडियन स्पेस रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज लॉन्च इट्स पी एस एल वी पोलर सेटेलाइट लॉन्च व्हीकल सी फिफ्टी फाइव ऑन विच टू सिंगापोरियन सेटेलाइट हैव बिन लॉन्च वन इज टेली ओ एस टू एंड वन इज लूमलाइट फोर दीज टू हैव बिन लॉन्च फ्रॉम द सतीश धवन स्पेस सेंटर सो दीज टू सिंगापोरियन सेटेलाइट वट विल दे डू to support the satellite imagery of several agencies of singapore so one is for imagery and second is the synthetic aperture radar that will offer coverage in all weather conditions day as well as night so one is synthetic aperture radar and one will offer imagery teleos and lumlight 4 and it is significant and it shows the prowess of india's uh, space technology and speaks volumes about the capability of isro as well that countries like singapore are sending their satellites aboard our payload our uh, rockets so that is something we should be cheerful about india's first water metro so as you can see in this particular picture this is india's first water metro and uh, it has been launched in kochi so kochi is a city in uh, kerala and it has a lot of islands basically through which uh, uh you know uh, to which the connectivity is basically required so this water metro is going to provide that connectivity and it is going to you can say uh you know it's going to act as not only a mode of transport but also as a clean mode of transport for example it is going to be electric hybrid boats so there are going to be a lot of boats 70 to 80 boats 78 electric boats are going to be there 38 terminals or stations are going to be there so kochi is a kind of a city where there are so many islands small islands so it is better to have a water metro so water metro does not mean that metro train will run in under water or something like that so it is basically these boats which are like metro trains and these boats are going to ferry people from one island to another and it's going to be a seamless connectivity so that is why it is being called metro and it is the first of its kind in india <clears throat> it is being funded by the kerala government as well as a german company kfw next mana in uttarakhand along the india china border there is a village called mana so a few weeks back the cm of uttarakhand had referred to it as the last village of india he said mana is the last village of india so prime minister gave a call prime minister tried to correct the chief minister that uh, it is not the last village it is it should be called the first village now there is no difference in calling it the first or the last village the point is the perception should be that those villages are not the end or not on the periphery but they should be considered the first villages of the country and if you consider them as the first villages then you will think about their development then you will think about the basic amenities and then you will think about making them so robust that they can withstand the pressures of a border village so that is the perception that is being sought to changed here so this is a photograph where the border roads organization bro has put up a board calling first indian village mana so this board has been put up just 3 4 days back and this shows a changed perception about the border villages that now a lot of emphasis is going to be put on the border villages infra and for this the government has launched a separate program called vibrant villages program so all the villages which are going to which are close to the border areas are going to be given special emphasis on a total of 2967 villages are so approximately 3000 villages in 19 districts in the northern border of india including in the states of uh, punjab uh, jammu and kashmir uh, ladakh uttarakhand himachal pradesh etc 
ऑल्सो अरुणाचल प्रदेश सिक्किम उत्तराखंड अरुणाचल प्रदेश हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड यूटी ऑफ लद्दाख सो इन दीज नॉर्दर्न स्टेट्स विच बॉर्डर मोस्टली पाकिस्तान एंड चाइना दिस प्रोग्राम हैज बिन लॉन्च बिकॉज चाइना इज ऑल्सो यू नो बिल्डिंग अ लॉट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन द बॉर्डर विलेजेस सो वाई शुडेंट वी एंड दैट इज वाई दिस प्रोग्राम हैज बिन लॉन्च Mahavir Singh Fogart has been appointed as the chairman of Mixed Martial Arts Association. So, Mixed Martial Arts Association uh, basically uh, is a mixing of boxing, wrestling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, and other things. There are three, four kinds of martial arts. If you mix them all and if you use them at the same time, that is called mixed martial arts. The idea is what the major purpose is. you know to defeat the opponent using a combination of striking and grappling techniques right so the idea is to defeat the opponent through mix and match of various techniques and it's a very uh, popular art nowadays mixed martial arts so he has been appointed as the chairperson of that and these four are the daughters of mahavir singh fogart uh, geeta geeta fogart bibita fogart vinesh fogart and uh, one more all four are world level wrestlers women wrestlers and the movie dangal is based on the life of mahavir singh fogart next india has been adjudged as the fourth largest military spender in the world this report is released by stockholm international peace research institute cpri which is based out of sweden and uh, a few weeks back also there was a report which showed india as the largest importer of weapons in the world and now the fourth largest spender on defense so if we look at the top 5 ranks us is at number 1 china is at number 2 russia is at number 3 india of course is at number 4 and then comes saudi arabia right so us china russia india and then saudi arabia are the top military spenders now i'll tell you a uh, uh, one figure that will tell you that will show you the disparity or let's say the inequality as far as defense spending is concerned the top 3 spenders us china and russia collectively contribute 56% of the global military expenditure that means out of the or 200 odd countries in the world the top 3 countries spend more than half of the total expenditure on military in the world that is you know a lot of uh, imbalance as far as hard power is concerned anyway next we have international chernobyl disaster remembrance day international chernobyl disaster so chernobyl is a place which is in the present day ukraine but earlier it was a part of soviet union here on 26th of april 1986 approximately 37 years ago i would say chernobyl nuclear power plant met with an accident and radiation was leaked which led to the death of approximately 4000 people 4000 people died because of gas leak and uh, in fact the long term repercussions are still felt in and around that area so this is considered to be one of the worst nuclear tragedies around the world chernobyl disaster and it is somewhat similar to that of uh, the bhopal gas tragedy that india suffered about 2 to 3 years before the same time in 1983 84 so this day we celebrate on the 26th of april international chernobyl disaster remembrance day and due to that disaster the checks and balances on the nuclear power plants have become really really stringent the sharja stadium name uh, has been named after sachin tendulkar so sharja is in united arab emirates uae so sharja has a <clears throat> cricket stadium on the occasion of sachin tendulkar's 50th birthday on uh, 24th of april uh, 2023 the stand has been named as sachin tendulkar stand the reason is that sachin tendulkar had played an innings here 
<coughs> in the year 1998 and coincidentally this is also the 25th anniversary of that innings because this innings he played on April 22nd and 24 in 1998. So on the 25th anniversary of that as well as, the, as on the 50th birthday of Sachin Tendulkar in this stadium the stand has been named after Sachin Tendulkar and it was during that innings that he was named Desert Storm or Sachin Storm. So this is a term associated with Sachin Tendulkar, Desert Storm. And uh, that is because he had two innings, one of 143 runs and one of 134 runs here, which are widely remembered. Also, Sharjah Stadium has created a world record, Guinness World Record for hosting the most number of one day international matches by hosting. 244 matches which is a world record so two things for which Sharjah Cricket Stadium has become famous Mr. Dalai Lama was awarded with the Asian Nobel so Magsese award is informally known as the Nobel Prize of Asia so he was awarded that in 1959 but in person, he was able to receive the award now after 64 long years. After a 64 year wait, now Mr. Dalai Lama has been conferred with this award. You know, the reason being maybe he was not able to travel there. Uh, there were so many restrictions. 1959 was the year when, uh, you know, there was a Chinese uprising against the Tibetans. It was a tumultuous time. And it was around that time that Dalai Lama, along with thousands of his followers, came to India and India provided him political asylum and they are living in a place called McLeodganj in Himachal Pradesh along with his followers. So now he has got this award. At that time, his elder brother Gyalo Thondon had accepted that award, but now he has been given the award. And if we talk about the Raman Magsese Award, it was established in 1957 in the memory of Philippine President Raman Magsese. So Raman Magsese was the president of Philippines who was by nature a philanthropist and a peace lover and he was dedicated to public service. So in his memory the Raman Magsese award is given. There have been quite other notable winners of India as well. For example, Vinoba Bhave was the first winner from India. Vinoba Bhave, right, uh, a prominent uh, freedom struggle icon. Then we have Arvind Kejriwal has won this award in the past for his uh, duties when he was an IRS officer for his campaign for the Right to Information Act. He was awarded the XMXSA award, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal. And recently, uh, Ravish Kumar, the journalist, he was given this award. Right? So this is called the Nobel Prize of Asia and it is awarded from Philippines, its capital Manila. It is given in six categories. There are six categories. One is government service. Second is public service. Third, community leadership. Fourth, journalism. Fifth, creative arts. And sixth is peace and international understanding. So Mr. Dalai Lama has been given this award in peace and international understanding. And uh, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal was given this award in public service and Mr. Ravish Kumar in journalism, most likely. Next, Mr. Ratan Tata, the famous industrialist from India and chairman emeritus of Tata Group, has been given the highest award of Australia. So here is Mr. Ratan Tata, after being conferred the highest award of Australia. <clears throat> the highest award of Australia is Order of Australia. This is the name of the award. It's the highest civilian honor of Australia and it was done by Australian High Commissioner to India, Barry O'Farrell. So he's Mr. Barry O'Farrell, Australian High Commissioner to India. Why was Ratan Tata given Australia's highest award? In recognition of his contributions towards strengthening bilateral relations between India and Australia. So he has strengthened bilateral relations between India and Australia. He has also been a strong supporter of 2022 India-Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement. And that is another reason for him to be given this award. Also, 
Tata Consultancy Services has the largest workforce or of any Indian company in Australia, around 17,000 employees. So TCS is the biggest employer in Australia, a biggest Indian employer in Australia. So that is another reason for him to be recognized. Finally, pop star Shakira is Billboard's first Latin woman of the year or inaugural Latin woman of the year. So she is from Colombia. She's a Colombian singer and uh, she's declared the Latin woman of the year at the Latin Women in Music Gala hosted by Billboard. Right. So since Colombia is in Latin America, so she is the first Latin woman to get this honor. So she has exceptional music contributions spanning over 30 years and she is titled as the Queen of the Latin Music. She has been honored with several prestigious awards including three Grammy Awards, 39 Billboard Latin Music Awards, 12 Latin Grammys and 7 Billboard Music Awards. Right? She also has a deep passion for philanthropy and she invests and she spends a lot of money on education in various parts of the world. So, her name you have to remember as the first uh, woman to be the Latin woman of the year. That is all for this week's current affairs. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned a lot many things that you earlier were unaware of. And uh, please keep uh, engaging us on this channel. There are a lot of videos that you can watch. Every week we put a lot of videos and uh, you can... Uh, Search the YouTube channel and you will find that we have current affairs videos for the last two years. Every week we have a topic of the week and we have weekly current affairs. So do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon and also let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much. See you next week. Till then, this is me Manish Mittal signing off. Take care.